and I knew that I wanted to climb at Rumney a lot. Yeah. When we got there, and I think the hardest I'd climb was like 12C. And I was like, I'm going to do this route. I'm going to do China Beach. It yeah. Was a <laughs> foregone conclusion. And all these people I knew in Arkansas were like, no, that's you're a crazy person. That's going to be very <laughs> difficult. I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And so, I mean, I perhaps maybe even a little bit chose to go to grad school where I did so that I would have the chance to do China Beach because I was like infatuated with it, with it before I had even been to Rumney. In this first episode, we dive into what makes China Beach the perfect rock climb and how both Michael and I became obsessed with it. We do a breakdown of the route, including the weird and wonderful lower section and the heroic moves above the break, and we attempt to unpack at a philosophical level just what makes a rock climb good. Michael talks about watching Alex Mago send it, and we also highlight the best videos of the route so you too can get psyched. Videos and other references are linked in the show description. We are live. <laughs> I'll do the intro. We may or may not use it, but um, I'll do the intro. And then we'll just <laughs> yeah, I thought, you, I thought well, you would have started it already. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome to Climbing China Beach, a podcast series all about a single route. I'm Rajiv Iyengar, climber on the weekends, working in startups during the day. And this is my friend and co-host, Michael Penn. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to do this podcast with you. It's going to be a great time. Yeah, I'm excited to do it. Yeah, it's going to be great. So, Michael, I mean, sell me on China Beach. What's so great about it? I think it's the perfect rock climb. It's uh, short, but not too short. So it's like Uh around 35 moves. There are Mm -hmm. no easy moves. But yet, even though there are no easy moves, there are no stopper moves for the grade. So the boulder, you know, it's a 514 rock climb. So obviously there are difficult moves, but mm-hmm. there isn't like some sort of gnarly V10 off the ground to get to get going. It's like just a nice sprint to a part at the middle that it's slightly harder and then a sprint uh-huh. to the top. It's perfect. It's no perfect. bad moves. The- What's coming to mind is the mountain project description. I've got it in front of me. It's from from our friend Jay Noer at Rumney. China Beach is the ultimate sport climb and is the standard against which all other sport climbs should be judged. That's how it starts, which I I I love. It's like, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty apt. Right, right. High praise. High praise. I mean, I'd agree with. I agree with all of that. I mean, I think the route's full on from the start. It's, it's very safe. You know, as somebody who has tried China Beach when I was not climbing that hard sport, it's, very, it's pretty safe. Uh, you're oh, you're always sure. kind of totally safe to fall. It's yeah, yeah, really yeah. about that, the route, about the movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, maybe we, should, maybe we should kind of describe the route. Like, how would, you, how would you break down the route in like a little bit more detail than you just did? Yeah, so it's it, the formation of the rock. It's like this cleanly crashing wave of nice. Yeah. It's just a beautiful swell. And the, top, the bottom half, maybe the bottom three-fifths, is this seam system that you have to lay back an undercling up to a break in the middle from which you do like a crimp boulder problem sequence to the top. And so right as the angle is easing, the holds get worse. Um, It's smaller. Smaller and further apart. And Mm -hmm. you have to start climbing very, very straightforward power moves, whereas the bottom is more kind of flowy layback and undercling moves. Yeah. The most beautiful stone, you know, that I've ever climbed on as well. Like just amazingly perfect, nice and schist with quartz crystals like in the perfect places it's amazing these quartz streaks yeah Yeah. running down it and we'll link both the mountain project description and uh videos of the route in the show description brian kim is a good place to start we'll probably touch on our favorite films a little bit later but yeah what you described you just started out by describing the rock and do you remember when you first 
arrived at Waimea, which is the cliff at, at Rumney where China Beach is located. Do you uh, remember yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. that first impression? I do. Well, in fact, I moved to Albany, New York from Little Rock, Arkansas to go to grad school, and I knew that I wanted to climb at Rumney a lot. Yeah. When we got there, and I think the hardest I'd climb was like 12C. And I was like, I'm going to do this route. I'm going to do China Beach. It yeah. Was a <laughs> foregone conclusion. And all these people I knew in Arkansas were like, no, that's you're a crazy person. That's going to be very <laughs> difficult. I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And so, I mean, I perhaps maybe even a little bit chose to go to grad school where I did so that I would have the chance to do China Beach because I was like infatuated with it, with it before I had even been to Rumney. Wow, that's amazing. So you'd, how did you get infatuated with it? Um, I think I saw one of the dosages or I saw, yeah, I definitely, it's in one of dosage the dosages, two. right? Yeah. yeah I, saw, I saw it in one of the dosages and then I saw there was a Uncommon Ground, a climbing in New England movie. Joe Kinder, right? Yeah, Joe Kinder does it in that. I still have not seen that. I have not been able to find that. Yeah, that film. so that's when the obsession started. And, you know, this was like 2005, so, I mean, you couldn't find any other footage yeah, around that time. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But for some reason, like, even from afar, um, I, for some reason I knew it was of high quality and worth investing time in. I think it does show its quality in the videos. Or, like, you look at the videos and you just... You just want to climb that. You want to do those moves, or I wanted to do those moves. For mm-hmm. for me, I I didn't. I don't know that I re- had seen the video, but I do remember Waimea. The first time I I went, it's like a college climbing trip, and as as you said, it's this steep black wave of rock, you know, named for a beach in Hawaii. And one of the things I remember, I think, you know, I hadn't done a 12A at the time. I remember the steepness and just how the quick draws seemed to be levitating out of the wall. It like messed with my head. I was like, this is insanely steep. And then I remember that, that patch of rock really caught my eye. I actually, the, the first climb I hopped on at Rumney, either first or second climb, I think was Jaws, right? Just left of (laughs) China beach. Cause I was like, ah, I've kind of heard of this route and that is one amazing thing about climbing that you can just get on any route. For like, sure. Like, um, if you're a tennis player, you can't just play Roger Federer. You, you can't just walk up to him and play. But you can actually do that with a route. And that's kind of how I started, you know, trying China Beach. It's just right there. It right. It you kind of dream big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's the best part of the best cliff at Romney. Like, yeah. Waimea is by far the best cliff, and that's the best part of the best cliff. Even going deeper into the route itself, uh, there are these kind of three sections. There's the intro, there's the lower section up to the break, and then there's the crux. Did you have, like, a favorite sequence or a favorite set of moves? I preferred the top from the bottom. Interesting. Um, I knew that once... I stuck the move from the break that I wouldn't have to go too too many more goes to the top. I think I fell after the break only two or three times, like from sticking the big under underclean move from the break. But I like really straightforward pulling, which is what it is from the break to the chains. You know, yeah. Not that I don't appreciate the bottom. But, I, you know, I like the climbing in the bottom, but often, you know, if you were just a little bit out of balance for a day, it was easy to fall. Or yeah. there was a crystal in one of the side poles that would give me a flapper on the back of one of my fingers every once in a while. Yeah. And that was, like, devastating. The uh, left hand yeah. the finger. Yep. There's this little notch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for, for people who are watching the videos... We'll probably link the videos with timestamps below, but in the the lower section, you're in the stressful crack system. Your feet are on kind of either either these edges at a difficult angle or these smears. And there's one point, it's the hold you clip off of, 
right in the middle of that crack system. Mm -hmm. And there's this kind of little notch that digs into your left hand little finger. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you've been working on China Beach a bunch, you either have that taped or you're, you're, you're bleeding there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's definitely like the thing I remember because I, I, some, you know, as you might infer, Michael sent China Beach. I'm still working on it. Uh, I've spent a lot of time on that bottom half. It took me several years to kind of link it. And so I got really, really deep in those moves. And there, that crack system is so weird and complicated and, and in some ways stressful. And it kind of culminates in this, this one move that almost everybody does in the same way. Um, I used to just call it the move, and I'll, I'll link that below. But it's where you get this... Uh, you've been underclinging the crack system, and you sw you switch your right hand to a Gaston, and you step your left foot really, really high up, and you kind of lock your knee into the corner and reach mm -hmm. up what seems like impossibly high. That do you do you remember kind of was that move kind of quick for you? Do you remember unlocking yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I had a trick. Ah, uh, my trick was I think I got my left foot up a half move earlier than most people. Yes. You know, I'm, I remember I'm, this. I'm like quite flexible or whatever. So I was able to do that and getting that move, that foot up a half move earlier meant that there was no unwinding tension for mm -hmm. me as like the standard way you get a lot of unwinding tension. So I was able to get that foot up high before I hit the guest on. Yes. And then immediately charge off of it that the setup into that move so michael's talking about the setup steps into that move i used to think that the setup was very height dependent the exact sequence of when do you move your feet when you move your hand because we were work you know i was working on it with our friend daryl who's even taller than i am and he was starting to do even a different sequence but i do remember trying your beta with the foot up sooner and even though I'm a bit taller, it did mm -hmm. work for me. And there was something about, so th there's this interesting thing with the bottom section where it's all about your body trajectory. Like most, the way most people do it, their, their body weight kind of swings right and left. And the way that, the way that you found with the foot up, it, do, it is a little bit tricky to get that move, but it means your body goes kind of straight and kind of cruises right. into the move itself. Mm -hmm. um, actually, the, probably the best way to see this is to watch your video, as great as grainy as it is. <laughs> I, yeah. I kind of love it. It's like the most smooth, direct path right yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. To the cliff. I mean, so for me, that that move, I spent like so much time. I, you know, I would think about the move at work. I had videos of myself. I, I really went kind of deep on, um, you know, Dave Graham's kind of box model of, mm -hmm. of climbing moves where you want to try and find the stable box and move between the boxes to get uh, these invisible boxes, you know, move between right. those to get between moves. I, I remember kind of drawing this vertical line on the video and seeing a couple different attempts where when my body was like, when I was leaning too far out of the, out of too far past the line, the move was impossible. And when I leaned into the wall too far to the right, my foot would skate off. And there was this kind of like balance point where the move felt easy. Mm -hmm. it, it, yeah, it felt like doing the hardest bicep curl I'd ever done while walking a tightrope or something like that. <laughs> that sounds right. There's a French Canadian, I forgot his name, unfortunately, but he, he described climbing the bottom. You know, you want to push hard into your feet so that they don't skate but not so hard because the harder you push into your feet, the more force you press into your hands. And <laughs> you want to minimize the force into your hands, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. Because it, it is, yeah. uh, that's, that's what it feels like. The first time I got into the, that dihedral or crack system, it just felt like I'm going to pull my arms out of their sockets. Like you're yeah. pulling so hard, especially if you're insecure about your feet because you stand up harder. 
mm-hmm. and then as you find the path, it can get smoother and smoother. Yeah, I remember Julien uh, mm-hmm. said that the way he found to do the move was a dynamic move into a body position, which was interesting. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but he kind. Of, in some ways, I, I feel like he used a lot of power to get through that, which he has power in abundance. Right, right. Yeah, he's. there are a couple of people that I've climbed with in my life that I thought I was peers with climbing. <laughs> and then some switch turned on in them, and I was like, oh, no, we're not the same. <laughs> like, Andrew Palmer and I were climbing together on Live in Astro. Yeah. And we were doing about the same and then some switch turned and he did it and i never did <laughs> so the same yet. sort of thing same sort of thing happened with julian mm. yeah special special climber i mean yeah uh that move i still stay up at night like kind of thinking about that move because it's when you stick it it's not actually that hard that's that's kind of the funny thing right so we're, t- we're talking about the bottom a little bit. It's pretty unique. You should definitely watch a video. That top is when we talk. Go back to what makes this route so good. The bottom's unusual. It's special. It's difficult. It's stressful. And then the top. You mentioned straightforward pulling. We've talked about how every move on the top is really, really classic. Now, mm-hmm. un. Can you unpack that a little bit? Like, what does that mean for moves to be classic? Mm, good question. I mean, it's like what makes a rock climbing move fun. Yeah. Right? It puts you on edge the right amount. Yep. Right? It's like a, a, a difficulty without being low percentage. Hmm. Right. Some, you know, some moves are just low percentage, but not that difficult. And so they can be like kind of frustrating or stressful. Yep. But these are difficult kind of large ish move, but moves, but not too large. I mean, unless you're kind of like smaller. Right. Um, but not low percentage. So you feel like a champion climbing them. Yeah. 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 I, I, I really had that. I mean, when I, when I did the top moves, they were a struggle for me. I yeah. was doing, you know, a couple in isolation, but um, you feel like a champion. You feel mm-hmm. like you're, you're just a hero. It's like when you do uh, coming right out of the break, when you start reaching to the left and you get the the the, the ears, you're just mm-hmm. you're kind of sp- spanned out a little bit, and not that much, but you are you are doing a large sideways reach. You're doing right. a really you know, a foot switch on a foot that's not actually that small, but you got to nail that foot switch yeah, 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 and yeah. peel off. And there's a great video uh, in the Brian Kim video. That first attempt, he kind of peels off on that foot switch. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time I did the foot switch, I felt like a hero. Like I'm in the, I'm in that <laughs> mood. Like, I know what this yeah, yeah. body position feels like because I've watched this so many times. There, one idea I was kind of playing with is that the top kind of feels like somebody said it in a gym, but the best setter in the world. Like, right. Like yeah. it's much, it's more complicated and interesting than anything you would find in a gym and mm-hmm. it flows and it, every, the moves are like kind of consistent ish in difficulty. Right. And it's like, if you, if somebody set this in a gym, one, nobody would figure it out unless they really thought about it. But mm-hmm. then two, it would be the most amazing the most amazing little boulder problem and exit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The move right out of the break is slightly more difficult than the others. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, but then it's super consistency. That moves look so improbable. So, you know, and again, we'll timestamp this right out of the break. You get this under cling. You're, you're in the break. Some people shake, some people don't. It seems like a very stressful shake. If you do shake, you only yeah, shake I, once. I didn't do anything. <laughs> and, I put the and, rope in the quicktron. That's it. <laughs> and then you go for it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you you reach. Uh, your right hand goes into this kind of really turned over undercling, mm-hmm. and 
you kind of it would hurt my wrist today because i'm so old now (laughs) yeah yeah you're really torqued over there yeah Uh, but it's it's as i recall like i don't know a pad it's got some bite to it it's like pretty good yeah yeah. and then you do this huge move uh Mm -hmm. to like a gaston crimp with your Mm -hmm. left hand yeah you take that undercling like to your thigh yeah yeah it's, yeah, it's quite a unique move. And then the the surprise for me when I when I tried the upper moves, because it looks like the hardest move to get up into that side pull crimp. Mm-hmm. I think, what, what do you call it? Uh, moving the right foot up after that was a little bit harder for me. Like there's yeah, this yeah, I've heard unique people core say that. tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I would say they're even in, in difficulty. I would say it's like a, it was that move was a little higher percentage for me. Mm. Yeah, because the foot yeah. you're going to, you're kind of stabbing your foot into the break, which is a ledge. Right. Um, but it's your it's big. right hands. It's big, but you're in this funky tension where your right hands really turned under cling, and your left hands mm-hmm. are gassed on, and you somehow mm-hmm. have to like stabilize and square up, and kick mm-hmm. your foot up. And, you know, I will say Alex Megas looked a little stressed on that, that foot move. <laughs> <laughs> on a second go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> kind of using that as a jumping off point, what other, if people want to kind of familiarize themselves with the route or just get psyched, you know, what are some of your, what are some of our favorite videos? I think we already mentioned Brian Kim video. I think that's a, I think that's a great one. It's a classic. Yeah. Um, it was the one of the first ones up on the internet. You know, from YouTube in like t- 2006 or seven or something. Yeah, that's a good one. I would say the Alex Magos one. It's not well known. Yeah, right. It's not like a famous Alex Magos video. It's just someone with their phone. It's a. Uh... Is it Felix? Is it our friend Felix? I think so. Julian's brother? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My leg is in that video because I was <laughs> hang dogging on Living Astro watching this kid like do the hardest rock climb that I'd ever done at the time. I mean, um, that's those amazing. Are the ones, yeah, yeah. And then the ones from like movies, like the Dave Graham one is good. Mm-hmm. The Joe Kinder one from Uncommon Ground is good. I'm not familiar with, you know, some of the others, but I know that there are more. Yeah, there's some there's some on YouTube because people are still you know people yeah. are sending people are sending it and Nick Orange's one has a pretty cool like upper camera angle of the route. Oh. Uh, we'll link that also. And then uh, actually one of the things I wanted to ask is you've seen the Alex Megos video and then you were actually there. Like, what was it like in real in real life watching him? You were there for his first attempt too, right? Uh, I don't. I think I was around the corner for his first attempt. Yeah, so I didn't notice it. Um, I, I don't really remember that that closely. What was it like? I mean, it was like watching someone climb five nine. <laughs> but That's I knew it was so ridiculous five fourteen. <laughs> I mean, that was one of the things. It wasn't dramatic at all, right? Yeah. I mean, I knew the difficulty of the route, so that it was like amazing. But um, he wasn't stressed. I mean, it was like. That trip to Rumney was kind of his coming out party. He um, wasn't really well known before that. And during that trip, he did lots of hard stuff. He did the fly several times um, for video. He could just do it on command. And then from there, I think he went to the Red and did everything. And then he went to Waco and did everything. Um, And then I think, you know, not so long after that, maybe the January, February after that is when he on site of the world's first 9A. So, or yeah. performed the first 9A on site, maybe. That's a way to say it. That's not as confusing. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because he did not on site um, Hubble or Action Hubble Direct. Hubble or Action Direct, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, so, I mean, like, yeah, I, the first thing I saw him climb was um, Aquarius. He was warming up. Um, and I don't know. He just did a move, dropped his hand, held on with one hand, and like did a one arm lock off to the next move. <laughs> you know, it was like like he was climbing a ladder. It was amazing. 
Yeah, I re I rewatched that movie um, a few days ago and uh, of China Beach and. First of all, his beta looks really awkward because he doesn't really matter to him. He's so so right. calm. Um, and second of all, it just looks like gravity is really weird. Like there is no gravity on the lower section, and the lower section, especially the the section going up into that that the move as I as I've been calling it, mm -hmm. it's not hard hard, but you're navigating this pretty steep crack section. The feet aren't that, um, you know, as, as you said before, you, you don't want to press too hard, uh, mm -hmm. or your arms take most of the weight, but that's not a factor for him. He's just, yeah. And you want chilling. to be efficient. Yeah. Like you want to be efficient in that section. And these, like the couple of pro climbers that I've seen climb, China Beach, what really set them apart was their ability to do the, do the route without being efficient. Yeah. Right? Because, like, a normal person has to be efficient at the bottom. Like, Right. They can be secure. Alec, yeah, Alex Megos was not efficient. He was, like, doing weird moves. Cedric Lashaw was not efficient. He was doing weird moves at the bottom. <laughs> um, but they just had power to burn. Yeah. Yeah, it really puts things in perspective. Yeah. Well, um, anything else you want to kind of touch upon in our kind of first first episode exploring this? Yeah, I would like to say that Rajiv is very brave for continuing to try this route as a non-local because <laughs> it is very difficult to uh, have good conditions in New Hampshire. <laughs> Yeah. Tell and, me, yeah, tell uh, me more about that. Yeah, you get a huge advantage from living there. Okay, so the route's in the sun. Like, it faces the sun. I guess, like, yeah. there's shade on it in the summer, but it's the, then it's the summer. It's too hot. I don't know. I know people have climbed it in the summer, but it's like teenagers that climb it in the summer, not, like, adult humans. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then... Uh, in the fall, it starts when it starts getting cool. It starts getting wet because so there's this theory. This old timer climber told me that in the fall, when the trees stop, you know, when they lose their leaves, they stop using as much water, and so mm -hmm. they don't soak up the water from the rain as well, and so that's why you get this. Um, kind of drainage more in the fall so anyway right when it starts getting cool enough in the fall it'll often be wet yeah and then which to me made the spring the best time because it would be dry because stuff was frozen at the top mm. but then and it's tricky it, to get that timing right because but it's tricky to get that timing right because then it can all of a sudden be too hot so i did it in the spring march 20th 2010 mm. <laughs> and I, um Oh, yeah. It was, it it was wet all morning, but then it dried up in the sun. Wow! Like the top, the top area was wet. Yeah, the top area was wet, and then I, it dried up in the sun. And I then when we were driving home after I did it, my wife was like, oh, "Maybe we should try to have a kid now." <laughs> <laughs> and and here it's you a are. True story. Yeah, 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 it's a true story. And now I have a kid that's uh, about to turn eleven. So it wasn't too much longer after that that that's that occurred. Amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that makes all of the sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. I I was I was kind of reflecting on the conditions a bit. It, I mean, it, it's never occurred to me not to try and send China Beach with every fiber of my being. So, the conditions were never yeah, yeah, going to yeah. stop me. But, <laughs> but now that I think about it, like I did swap belays with uh, Enzo Otto when he was coming through. And he fell several times because the top was just soaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was not a problem for me because I was not making it up there. But um, I do remember, like, uh, he was trying to do something, like, pretty ridiculous, which is send a wet China Beach. <laughs> right. And he got pretty close. He was falling on the, I think, the Iron Cross move and, like, the feet and the hands and everything uh, was could... just soaking. Yeah, I could see that. So out of the break, you have some sharp holds. Yeah, which, I mean, for for someone that's very strong, would be climbable in the wet, 
but the iron cross move, you do this big move out to the left, and you're slotting your index finger to the right of this little spike, but that little spike is the only thing that has any gr like grip to it. Other than that, it's just like a, a schist sloper. So yeah. that that hold wouldn't give any sort of bite to it like the ones below it. So that would be like the that would be the place to fall if it were wet and you were able to climb the sharp yeah. holds. And you're relying on the foot. Usually people are kind of relying on a right foot or switching feet or something. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I, the yeah. other the other thing that's coming to mind is, you know, trying to get optimal fall conditions. You know, I remember living in Maine, climbing in New Hampshire. I would I would climb in like 13, 14 degree weather. So I thought mm -hmm. I'll brave the cold and go in November, like kind of early mid November. And then the top half was encased in ice, and I also had a really hard time finding the layers. Yeah. <laughs> so I got got iced out. But I did yeah. all my big Rumney climbs in the spring. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. and it gives me two windows to go. Um, yeah. So. I mean, that that's not normal, though. I think, you know, more people are sending in the fall, but for whatever yeah. reason, I did a lot of them in the spring. Well, maybe on that note, this is a good place to wrap, because one of the things I'm really excited for in the next episode and uh, the next episodes is diving into your process of sending. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just really That'd excited to, to get inside that. Um, yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and we will link all of the relevant routes, descriptions, videos, everything that we can um, in the show description. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. Yeah, this was great. That was great. Thanks for listening, whoever's out there. Yeah. <laughs>